Buenas and Hafsa Day. Thank you everyone for being here. The informational briefing by the Committee on Housing, Utilities, Public Safety, and Homeland Security is now called to order. It is now 11.02. For the record and in accordance with 5 DCA Chapter 8, subsection 8107, notices were sent out via email to all senators and all main media broadcasting outlets. I'd like to thank Senator Wilson, uh, Will Castro for joining me today. Uh, the purpose of this informational briefing is to help the committee and the general public understand issues of concern regarding the Guam Conservation Officers' personnel, overtime, budget requests, and all items and all items discussed at site during our tour on Friday, April 7, 2017. I'd like to thank uh, the Conservation Officers for hosting uh, me and one mem a member of my team uh, on that day. I'd like now to call uh, anyone that would be willing to give testimony and for these questions, Mr. Mark Uggen, Mr. Richard Rigadio, Mr. Daniel Anderson, Mr. Chuck Flores, Director Matt Sablon, and George Santos. Good morning, director and officers. How are you doing today? Good morning, ma'am. I, I just wanted to say thank you so much for, uh, you know, giving me your time on April 7th to really help me to understand what it is that you do, uh, all the hard work that you put forward in protecting our wildlife and the people of Guam. Um, it was a wonderful experience, and also at the same time, it was an eye-opener. Um, I was very uh, humbled by the resources that you had to pull together with your own money, uh, with your own personal resources uh, that the government could not provide for. And essentially, I asked for this informational briefing so that we could really understand, pardon me, this thing becomes a nuisance, so that we can really understand, uh, the people can really understand what it is that you do and some of the sacrifices you had to make for this job and, and really understand uh, how we can to help, how, what we can do as a legislative body to help you to do your job. Um, and please, I, 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 uh, I uh, humbly implore that you're candid and, and very honest with some of the shortcomings that the um, Conservation Office has uh, so that we can truly find solutions to help you uh, perform your job better and uh, also protect the safety of our island. So with that being said, um, I'd like to just go ahead and start with a PowerPoint presentation that you have prepared to, to brief the, uh, the public and the body. Uh, can, we ha can we get that on, please? Can I just... Yes, yes. Go, uh, just, just one moment. Yes, Director, do you have something to say? Uh, yes, Senator. And, and again, I, I thank you for the opportunity yourself as the uh, chair in the Committee on Law Enforcement and with Senator Castro. We, we appreciate this opportunity. And uh, like you mentioned, you know, it's long overdue if a lot of challenges are resources. These conservation officers, uh, they've been very loyal. Uh, as far as the resources, they, you know, they come up with their own expense resources just, just to maintain for the day, for the operation. Uh, and I truly appreciate whatever uh, Lieutenant Mark Cogan will present if you can consider uh, all these challenges. And I, again, I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Director. So we'll move forward with the PowerPoint presentation. And uh, Lieutenant Ogan, you'll be briefing us, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, ma'am, I'd like to start with uh, our mission statement. Uh, to the committee. Um, the Department of Agriculture uh, uh, mission for the law enforcement section is to assist the Department of Agriculture managing Guam's natural resources through the enforcement of Guam fish, fish and wildlife, endangered and threatened species, and forestry laws, rules, and regulations to make recommendations that may, that may be needed to 
upgrade existing laws and regulations so that future generations may enjoy the natural resources we now enjoy as an island of all. With that said, ma'am, we have a very, very large mission and with a substandard staff. This is, this is becoming to the point where it's, it's downright uh, um, abusive on the officers themselves. Um, we barely can get through a day without having to turn calls away with, 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 with knowing that we can actually do the job had we had the resources or the manpower to handle it because we know how throughout the years. Uh, with that said, um, we can move to the next one. Okay, our core values, to ensure the protection of Guam's natural resources and the public, to provide quality enforcement and laws, rules and regulations placed upon the island, to ensure that each officer is held to the highest professional standards, respect, integrity, and adaptability, to ensure the long-term support of our island's natural resources, community, and future generations to come. With this again, at the end of this presentation, you will see how much into the community protection and welfare that we actually provide, other than just the natural resource laws that we, that we enforce. Our vision, vision statement, striving to become a leading conservation enforcement section in the Pacific region, set apart strategic vision, clear mission, strong leadership and training, and strong professional officer corps. For your knowledge, ma'am, and the committee, Department of Agriculture Conservation Officers are known throughout our region, every island to include outside, like Hawaii, American Samoa, Samoa, Philippines, Malaysia. They're all calling our office for training with our expertise. We've been doing this as an as a, as a, as a agency for about six years now. It's demanding. They call us to represent enforcement issues throughout the world in front of nonprofit organizations like Pew, um, who has shark protection throughout the world, internationally. People are calling on our office because we're the best at what we do. And it's a shame that our island can't even help us a little bit with resources we need to do our jobs here. But the rest of the world is saying they're the best, call them. We need their training. It's hard for us to swallow that day in and day out. As a representative of the government of Guam through the Department of Agriculture, I don't see how we can sleep like that day in and day out, knowing the rest of the world is calling upon us for specialized training in natural resource enforcement, yet our own island is neglecting to see that we need help drastically. Okay, if you turn in your binder, ma'am, I, I have a page um, with the accomplishments, and you can read through that and see just how much we do throughout the, the um, just, let's just talk about two, just last year alone, okay? Okay, what's the, this one? Okay, if you look at, I think it's like the fourth page, Okay, under the 2016 arrest cases. This is just with the guys I have now to include the recruits who I'm trying desperately to hold on to that are thinking about seeking other employment because they've been recruits for three years. Everybody else has been hired at the same time, already have moved on to their PO1 or, or other pay grade already, and these guys are still my recruits after three years. So this is, this is, this is what we're talking about. If you look at these cases and see how many of arrestees and what what the caseload calls, this is a lot for, for just us eight guys. That's one of the things that I wanted to bring forward to you today. If you want, okay, and if you look at the next page, this is the part that should scare you. This is the page that shows you how many calls we receive other than the cases that we've actually handled that we sometimes cannot respond to. This is the public that looks to me and you for support for their resources. Yet we cannot accomplish this with the numbers and no resources. And this is from the 2006 yes, calendar this is, year? Yes, ma'am. Uh, fiscal and year, sorry. Fiscal Excuse year. Me. And how many uh, 
It says 100. 100 calls that you were not able to respond to. Yes, ma'am. For one reason or another, these are the calls. It goes all the way back. All, I mean, the cup is of two, two and a quarter pages just from what we got for you today. Okay, thank you. Yes. Even, even calls that we didn't get right away because we were too tired from another case before. We just had that this morning. We got a call at 2 in the morning from community saying, hey, there's poaching in here. And we're like, what can we do? We're just too drained out. We cannot, I cannot wake these guys up no more. It's too much. It, it's just too much. They would, might as well just live at home and forget their families. I mean, live at the office. It's that much of a workload. Every year, every year, we ask for help. Every year, we ask for more people. We got the three guys from Coral Reef Initiative funds, not from the government itself saying, okay, just like everyone else, we're going to allocate this much money for new recruits. And those are your three recruits? Yes, ma'am. So if you didn't have those recruits, you'd still be working on a staff of five? <laughs> I think we'd probably all resign by now. It's that bad. When is it going to be the day when they say, okay, enough is enough? We have our director here who has been supporting us since he was a deputy. He's here by my side. He inherited a lot of this problem, trying to do what he can to fix our problem. We have guys here that haven't been promoted for almost 27 years, yet he holds a master's degree. Where's the fairness in that? in the government of Guam as, a, as equal rights, as employees. I've said this many times in informational hearings and public hearings. When are we going to step forward? I myself graduated with him. I've been here for 27 years. I got promoted once. I'm a CO2. I'm doing a lieutenant's job. Can you swallow that for a second? How would you like it if you got paid as a janitorial and you're a senator? It's pretty much how we feel. All these years, there's nothing you can do to pay that back. Nothing. We just want to correct this system because it's piss poor, and we want to correct it for the new conservation officers that are coming up behind us because we're retiring. We keep saying that. Five years, I said. Now I'm going to tell you two years. Then I'm going to tell you for myself, maybe one. We try to teach them. We got recruits doing cyber crimes. Shame on us as a government. Shame on us. They don't even have computer skills. We're figuring it out on our own. We don't have telephones. We don't have internet. My data is gone. You should pay for my phone bill. Because we use that for reaching out to the public. My phone number is out there as an extra hotline. We could, you could flip through this and read it, and I guarantee by the time you're done, you'll cry And how much work we have. We'll go through the PowerPoint, and then we can discuss that. Okay. But this binder, if I'm going to go through this, we're going to take 10 hours. And that's okay? Yeah. So that's pretty much why we, you know, we followed your lead and, and provided these documents Thank to you. you. If you have any questions, you can email us. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Okay, training. This is just recent training that we've we've accomplished even on our own. Okay, CPR, first aid, AED, dive certifications. We must be certified divers as conservation officers. Okay, we have basic, advanced, and rescue diver already. We're ATV certified, all-terrain vehicle certified. We even train other agencies with this stuff. Okay, jet ski operations, even rescue. We're out there with our fellow GPD guys and fire searching for people that get swept out to sea. I spent seven days looking for the guys down at Fisheye. And, and, and why are we not treated the same? I train other officers in other agencies. I teach them. They come to us for some trainings. I'm about to teach DYA and DOC officers for fugitive tracking in case their, 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 their inmates run away. Yet we're still not treated properly. That's our problem. That's our voice right now, okay? Even tactical operations. Ma'am, I just got a letter from, I mean, an email from YAP, YAP State Police, asking me, please come to our island and train our officers. We're holding the highest levels, guys, as much as we can. But we need people. We need resources to do our job here in Guam. We're having a big problem here with illegal fishing, endangered species, and illegal hunting. 
And a lot of this is drug related. A lot of it. People who are doing these things to make money to buy drugs. Make money. It's sad that the whole economy of Guam is bad. Why do you do this? You know it's a marine preserve. Because, uh, excuse me. Because uh, they need to pay their power. I'm like, any little reason why? They, they do these things, but it's our natural resources that's being attacked. And we have to stop that. We have to prevent that from happening because it simply cannot, it cannot stand the workload. We have other nationalities that open fish stores here. Their operation is 24 hours a day. Our natural resources is, might not be able to hold that. It's just way too many, too many fishermen, too many people going into our marine preserves and hitting these places where we're trying to build our resources for the people. So are you saying you're not able to monitor the marine preserves and, and it's affecting the... As best we can? No, ma'am. Right now we have two vessels. I have a 40-year-old 40, 40 Boston whaler and a donated RHI rigid hull inflatable from GPD. Thank God they gave us the boat. But they both are out of service because we have no funding to repair them. So one boat is 40 years old? Yes, ma'am. And then you have another boat that is? It's probably 20 years old or more. And, and how much would it cost to fix that? We, we got donation from Mr. Weber from MDA to help buy the oil pumps and help us with engine repair on the other boat. We went out on our own looking for help. We were begging. We went to one agency, Gulf Guam agency, and we asked them, please, we deal with the tourists. We're here to protect the resources that the tourists come to see. And you know what we were told? Go fundraise. Excuse me. Wow. But at the same time, that same agency donates so much equipment to one particular agency for their operation. Like, what about us? We're in here protecting the, 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 the tourists as well, plus the resource. And we're also dealing with a lot of the homeless that are camping out in our beaches and making a lot of trash and nastiness in the beaches. We're the one pushing them out. You can call Parks and Rex and ask them, who's the one getting rid of these guys down there? It's us. So why, why? We ask for one vehicle. You know how old our vehicles are? Our patrol vehicles were down to one, 14 years old, and it's barely hanging on. You know what the life expense expectancy of a law enforcement vehicle is five years. When you see the slides, you're gonna really, really uh, understand our predicament. Please continue. Yes. These are trainings that are coming up. These are, we still move forward in bettering ourselves. We've got Federal Law Enforcement Training Center Boat School coming up, Homeland Security, Incident to Terrorist Bombing, Suicide Bomber, Fugitive Tracking, one, two, and three. We're the trainers for this as well. Okay, the, the, all the trainings required from, from us through DOE, I mean DOA, like report writing, grievance procedure, all of that. Our officers get up to speed and all that. Director, do they get grants for this training? Do they receive additional funding for this training that they provide to the other agencies? No, no, the, to my knowledge. For the federal no. trainings, they invite us, we come. We search for it and we go there. They provide the, the, the airfare, nothing to the government of Guam. That's the other beauty of it. We look for these things that don't cost the government nothing. They provide us the, the, the airfare and the, the accommodations while we're in these trainings. The other trainings we provide ourselves, we go home after each day. The other trainings that you saw there. But do the government agencies like you provide training? You said that- Two? No ma'am, we give it free. They don't, they don't uh, give I'm you not about to ask nobody money. They don't have money. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't know. I, it's just us being the people we are, yes. partners in law enforcement. We offer it and they receive it. It's as simple as that. Okay, special program. Let's talk about this real quick. Ma'am, I gave you a copy of this first one, Joint Enforcement Agreement. Again, took me 10 years to fight with the federal government for this with NOAA. This is the one Ms. Brown had talked to you about, right? And uh, Mr. Radiman, Chuck Radiman, special agent. We got a Joint Enforcement Agreement with NOAA. They're going to help us in whatever way they can. Again, their money is not guaranteed, but whatever they can do, they're willing to do. I'm talking to them about building us a home. 
They're not saying no, but they're saying maybe by the end of the year they'll figure out if they have enough. You've seen our office. Okay, uh, they're going to help us with with uh, uh, equipment, some equipment that they can provide, and also reimburse us. That's the beauty of this program. If I do stuff under this joint enforcement agreement, they will reimburse the government for what we did. So in essence, I will get that money back that the hours spent. We need an account to put that money in. I've asked for to, to create an account for that funding to be returned into so that we can utilize it to help ourselves. We didn't come here today just with our problems. We're trying to come with solutions as well. That was one of the solutions that we came with with the Joint Enforcement Agreement. Okay, the next one here is the LESO program. Law Enforcement Support Office with the federal government, that's DRMO, down at Big Navy. They have equipment that some, some of it might be useful to us. We're looking into that ourselves again, trying to get surplus equipment. But then again, after the military or federal government's done with it, they're not, they're not gonna be, it's not for longevity, it's just for now, a fix for now, like a Band-Aid on the wound for now. But it could be for five years or whatever it takes to keep it going. But then again, with no funding to help these older equipment stay up, like we'll show you later with our donated vehicle from uh, uh, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Farm. It's just like, it's, it, it came to us, we need service, we got no money, it's deadline, just like everything else. That's our problem. So even with looking into the lesso, I'm sorry, I thought I turned this off. Even with, even with, with, uh, with, with donated equipment, we still need the resources to repair them and keep them going. Next one. Okay, citation program. I did give you a copy of this system. Okay, we came forward many years ago. We need, why go through the process of arresting somebody for fishing and hunting when I can write them a citation and they could pay for that citation? Why do I have to spend man hours collecting all this gear only to be returned or stuffed in our evidence room for years to come? Why do we need that? We've said this many years ago. We need that citation to go. We'll make arrests if there's a felony offense involved in the, in, in the i.e. like, a, like a, a stolen firearm or something like that. We can still do that. But if it's a simple matter of fishing or hunting, write a citation, send him on his way. I don't need any of that. I'm sorry, I'm having a problem turning this off. But that's, that's what we put, we're putting forward these recommendations to the legislature many times and nothing's happening. We have, next one please. Uh, the reserve program. We're, we're not, we, we barely touch over time. $4,000 will last a couple years just on the numbers we have. But when you talk reserve program, we're getting 43 hours out of an individual and only giving him a stipend of $250. And we have people volunteering to join that that are certified, post-certified individuals. And that's, we're asking for 10 officers. That's 30 grand. That's a drop in the bucket for a government to operate for 10 officers. We've been asking for this program for many years. We've already went through the AAA process. It's already been into law. There, we provided that in your binder as well. How come we can't get these things? Why? I don't understand. To help the people and help us do our job properly. We need that program. We need both of these programs to be implemented. We need that account. So that's what I'm asking for, for today. Next, please. Okay, the last one is GCC. Like I said before, the nation has looked at us, the world has looked at us as a leader in conservation enforcement. We're about to start a regional academy at GCC where everybody wants to send officers from their nations to Guam to learn and train with us here at, the, at Guam Community College with the Department of Agriculture for uh, marine and terrestrial uh, enforcement. And now we got Samoa and people from outside like Hawaii, they're saying, hey, uh, can we send people too? They know we're the leader here. We need to step up and help. So we were stretching our hand out to them. And that's bringing in not only the student, not only recognition for the island of Guam, but it's also bringing in revenue. You know how much it costs for an individual to go to training for an academy's 
I think it's like over four grand. And we're asking for 20 for this first regional charter academy at GCC. So I, I, I'm going back and forth now. As the leaders of this, of this, uh, of this uh, uh, section that I've been trying to tell you is we're the best, but we don't feel appreciated. We don't feel needed. We don't feel supported from our own government. And it's got to stop. There are things, too, that I don't agree with. I'm told that budgets put forward and the legislator cut. How can you cut something that's not there? If you please take a look at our budget for FY18. If you don't see an operation budget, ask why. Where is it? We cannot operate without one. We need a budget. That's, I believe, is what, the, what you do, is you question the budget. We need that. Why isn't there funding uh, uh, being asked for, for for vacancies? We had a 19 at one point. We're down to eight for different reasons. But why aren't these vacancies filled over the years? When I retire, my boss just retired in 2015. Lieutenant Rages, if you remember him. I'm doing his job now. I'm still a CO2. He was a CO3 at least. In the old way of, of promotion, he was the lieutenant. We've created the new system. We're like a lieutenant at GPD, same thing as everyone else. But yet we still haven't done that. We're working on it now. We've applied. The director has got us in there, our foot in the door. We've applied. They announced it. We applied, but we haven't got promoted yet. Hopefully by this month we'll know if something happened, but that's okay. It's us, but what about the rest? Who's been here 10 and five and seven years? Are they gonna follow the old way of 27 years? Even if he gets promoted to a general right now, it doesn't make up for those 27 years of not being promoted, just like everyone else. We talk about equality, we talk about fairness. That's, that's, that's hard to swallow as a government. And I put myself in the shoes you wear as their leader. I'm part of this now. I'm part of you. They're not. They are following me. So they can get on me for what's not happening to them. Because I'm in the same ship you are now as the leader of this group. Next one, sir. Okay, current staffing. We have nine. One is assigned to Homeland, but we're we're in the process of moving him back to us. But he's currently unable to do the, do the patrols and, and officers' duties as a sign for, for another reason. But we're working on that right now. Vacancies, Lieutenant Sergeant and CO3, that's the jobs that we applied for, that we're working on getting hopefully by the end of the month. Okay, current organizational chart is within inside your, your binders as well. The director will explain. Uh, yes, <clears> of <throat> day, Senator Munoz. Thank you for joining. Uh, yes, I, you know, from what <clears throat> Lieutenant Ugun was uh, giving all the presentation, those are all the challenges, resources, equipment, manpower uh, versus, versus shortage of uh, vehicles. And I, again, there would be coming out of the shift and just arriving at home, they'll be called again to go out for for a violation. But anyways, on the let me let me just elaborate more on the organizational chart. I believe I did make copies. Do uh, you have it in front of you? So, do you have one, Senator? Williams? You have, you have this? I apologize, it's not on the slide. It was just a handout. You got it? Okay, so 
you know, in light, like what Lieutenant Algun mentioned, it's going to be 27 years, 27 years of being a CO1 and CO2. That that's we really on call for, and you know, it's it's. It's really a wonder why they are still around. I mean, you would think that they'll probably, you know, go to other agencies for opportunities, upward mobility. But it, anyways, this is in the works, like you mentioned. Uh, the lieutenant position there, the sergeant and the conservation officer three, that is, it's gonna be actually finalized and interviewed to, to happen probably within a month or less than a month. If you go down to the conservation officer, uh, of the three conservation officer ones, that's the recruits that actually promote promoted. They were recruits for three years. Now they're they're going to be in FY17 incorporated into FY18, be promoted to conservation officer ones. So with with the three promotions on top, that would free up three positions. That three positions, if you see on the bottom, the dotted box, that would actually be additional of three positions funded as a result of the three vacancies. And that will bring bring us up to uh, from nine to 12 personnel, which is still quite short of manpower. But this is just to let you know, this is what's happening now. Uh, hopefully to execute and be effective uh, within the fiscal year. Okay, so just to clarify, you said you saying that there will be uh, promotions, three promotions for conservation lieutenant? It will be the, the lieutenant position. Okay. It will be the sergeant position. Okay. Conservation officer three position. Conservation officer three. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. This is Michael Rages. I'm Con sorry? Conservation Officer 3, according to this chart that I have, is from 2016. Michael Rages. This is vacant now. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then now you're saying that it will fill, fill up three positions of Conservation Officer 1? Th that's correct. And, and, of course, the Conservation Officer 2, uh, of course, you know, being promoted, uh, uh, that will free up. So it's going to be a total of three, three. Three positions that you can put your recruits that you currently have into these positions. That, that the current recruits, their positions, promotion positions is separate. They're, they're actually already uh, funded for conservation officer three. Now the three promotions will free three more positions. Three more to hire. Uh, to, to hire. So the so total. New, new, new recruits. Right. So then recruits. it'll be from 8 to from 11? Nine, 9 to oh, 12. Oh, 9 to 12. Okay. Yeah. Earlier we mentioned 8, but. That's correct, yeah. yeah. So currently we have nine warm bodies, but uh, my, my uh, intent is to, with the three positions, to, to be able to hire, to go up to 12. And you now you have three conservation recruits that go up to CO3 in a budget. Where is that money coming from? On, on the, we got a total on the general fund. We do have, we, we fund Because you said it's a separate funding source. Uh, the recruits. The recruits, there's one that's funded currently under a general fund and two under a uh, tourist attraction fund. Yeah, and you said it goes up to CO3. I'm sorry? You, okay, just so, just to clarify, it's yeah. CO1. CO1. Okay, thank you. So that's... So I, you'll I, have 11, so when, when do you anticipate of having a full staff of 11? Well, it'll, it'll be 12, from 9 to plus oh, 3 sorry, 12. Oh, sorry, 12, thank you. I, I'm looking at before the end of the fiscal year. Right now, the three senior positions, I'm looking at to close everything within a month. So operation, by the end of the fiscal year, you'll have a team of 12. Exactly. And yeah. how much square footage do you guys uh, watch? What, what part of the island do you well, preserve? Island-wide plus military installations and three miles out to sea, man. So 
So uh, 24 hours operations. If we had the numbers, yes. Yeah. 12. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah, uh, but again, right now you've been doing it with eight, not able to respond yes, to calls. Yes, ma'am. Because of, of course, your own safety as well. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Just to clarify this, this how it's going to work. When the three senior guys move up to whatever position they gain, Lieutenant Sergeant and CO3, that'll free up where I'm at, which is a CO2. Right. So one of the other guys can move up to the two, and then the recruits can move into CO1, which frees up the recruit area, which is where the director wants to fill in. Okay. That's how it's going to work. Thank you. Thank you. So that, that, that is the progress as, as far as before the end of the fiscal year. That, that is my intent. Okay. So if you look at this page, it's in your binder when you get the chance. This is what it should look like. Okay. To include the reserve program. Yeah. Okay. Right here. Yeah, just a couple of pages forward from this. Got it. Okay. Yeah, this is what it should look like. Hmm. This is what we are hoping to gain. This will more than suffice the island of Guam and doing our job properly. Right. And, and the reason why, because we, of course we don't want top heavy positions, so it, the intent here is this to be a division. So uh, we, once we recruit the three conservation officers, uh, vacated positions, uh, when, we, when we move forward with these promotions, hopefully soon, It'll free up space in the bottom, like we said, we explained, to gain more people. But over the course of the years now, we're going to move forward with getting more people, hopefully with the help of, of NOAA as well and the government. Then but we nothing has been solidified now. Right. And and we're because we're, right now we were asking for two, two supervisors, one for the operations and one for the field, because no matter how many officers we have right now, that's how it's working. We have an operations sergeant, which is a seal one, and we have a field sergeant, which is a seal one right now. Mm. And we're asking for that. Yes, we are creating a ranking structure, but one, one, and one, it's still hard to deal with that. But we're asking to fix this problem once and for all, get it over with, give us the manpower to follow this. I'd like to return back to your presentation, and I'd also yes. like to acknowledge uh, my colleague, who's also a committee member, Senator Munia, for attending here today. Okay. Thank you, Senator. Sure. Okay. Okay, we passed this part. Mm -hmm. yes. Just on military, just on, if you go back one, please, the military deployment. Right now, I, I've lost my operations sergeant to military deployment to Anderson Air Force Base for a year, almost a year. So that's another one. Sergeant Regadio, CO1, is about to go to, to Korea. So you get my distress here. And possibly one more. First Sergeant Castro, who's on sick leave today. He may be deployed at any time too. <laughs> so then that will leave the four of us for the whole island of Guam, military installations, and three miles out to sea. Do you see the desperate need in my voice, in my heart, my speech i'm sorry i'm a little uh, i'm tired of this game i keep telling my family one more year just one more year so i can help the guys before i leave but what can i do so that's my predicament right now if i lose these guys to military what more and i got a couple guys here that are trying to get into the coast guard because this is just too hard. It's forcing these guys to go this avenue because they need to make ends meet. They can't even move forward in their lives because they can't do finances properly. If you're an institution of finance, you won't give these guys a loan to help themselves because they're just recruits. That's the kind of thing we, we gotta look at in the personal aspect. But as far as being officers, it's just going on too much. Your classmates are already martial ones, and wherever they're at, they talk to them daily, and they're still recruits. So far. Next. Uh, Senator Mooney, you have a question? Yeah. Excuse me. Um, I just wanted to know how long have they been recruits? Three years, ma'am. Three years yes. as a recruit? Yes. Okay, thank you. 
for the for the for the for as per DOA, after they become permanent recruits, six months later they become seal ones. That happened in January of seventeen. They're still recruits, and then the FY eighteen budget. I think they're still recruits again. So that's what I'm asking you to look at that and yeah. correct it. But, but like, like I mentioned, this is my goal as the director that they will be conservation officer one by the, this fiscal year. And Do they get it, back pay, retro pay? I, that, that's correct. They will get retro? I, I believe, yeah, that's correct. I'll, I'll look into it. Yes. But that, that is my intent. With the prom three promotions additional with, with them getting their uh, status upgraded to conservation officer what? We've beaten manpower as much as we can already. You understand the, the need and the shortfalls of manpower. Okay, all those issues apply. Okay, we'll move on to enforcement vehicles. Funding is always gonna be number one. For maintenance and to purchase new ones, we have none. 14 years is way overdue for it, especially our job. We're not just on the highway anyway, we're also in the mountains too, so it's even more strenuous on the vehicles that we have. Just so you know too, those vehicles that we are operating with now are not from the government of Guam. They were purchased through CRI, Coral Reef Initiative grant money. They were never, the last time the government of Guam purchased vehicles for conservation officers, I think it was in 98-ish, uh, the Cherokees, back in the 90s. Since 1998, you, the government has not purchased vehicles? No ma'am. We asked for help from the federal partners and they managed to give us four. And the reason why they gave us those four vehicles was because we also accepted the reserve program. So they said, okay, since they're getting the reserve program, the gov federal government said, okay, we'll give them the four vehicles. What happened during that time is as they were both happening, the funding crashed because at the time, the reserve program was having issues with the government of Guam side and the legalities and all that, even though it went through the, the process of becoming law and everything. So it never happened. They never, the federal government took the money back from the preservist, but they let us keep the vehicles. Oh, that was a, the, the reserve program. Yeah, that's about, uh, yeah, four, 2004, I believe it was. So, yeah, it's in the binder. But that's what happened back then. But we still utilize those vehicles. We, we utilize those vehicles as if the reservists were here. They were given to us to enforce the marine preserves, which we have diligently have performed. So we more than paid that back for the use of those vehicles. But then, that was 14 years ago. Those vehicles, we have one left. And you'll see in the slides when I explain that. Okay, equipment, body armor. The last individual in this department to get body armor was 10 years old already. So if you like me to go out there and face these poachers that shoot and feel good about what we do as a government, that's what I got. I actually went and purchased my own. That's how bad it is. And 99% of the time when you approach people, they are armed with either knives or guns. And you'll see in the slides, that's all I wanna say about that one. <laughs> Supplies, we ask, we borrow, okay. Phones, we have none. You have my personal cell phone. We don't have internet. Printing, we go to the other divisions somewhere else or we buy printer and ink our own. Yes, ma'am. And budget speaks for itself. Just by itself, all alone. Okay, out of the vehicles, three out of service. Okay, uh, we got 
three vehicles on loan from fisheries and wildlife at our division. None of them have emergency capabilities. If I have an officer in Tumon and one in Mariso checking the marine preserves and there's a life and death situation, we cannot legally respond to that officer because we have no blue lights and siren. I hope you heard that one real clear because we're going to have to explain that to their families if something happens. It'll be illegal for us to respond with our government vehicles that we are loaned to us because of that fact. The vehicles that we do have, they're expired. One of my officers got pulled over because he was expired three years, the vehicle that he's operating. We don't have money to, for that, either. just simple thing like that. <clears throat> Out of our um, utility vehicles, we have three of them from Homeland Security, but we don't have money to maintain them, and we need them desperately. And Director, those are, Director, what is the issue? Why, why are they driving around illegally in expired vehicles? Why, what, what is the situation here? How come they don't have funding to just simply fix vehicles for their own safety? Well, again, you know, at the, the beginning of the fiscal year when we submit our... How long has this been going on, Lieutenant Logan? I believe like for, for years. Many years, yeah. So we, we do... We so do what, is the big, what is the big challenge? The, the challenge is when we submit for operational and expenses like that on our wish list and the... Uh, well, this uh, is not a wish list. This is essentially a I mean, it's essential, list. yeah. So from the administration, when they... They, they they give us every penny and approve every penny and then of course it it comes to the legislature these, these are indi indicative of what we need for operational and that's that's what we're here for and so I mean, for years they have not been given any money for these issues so it's not a matter of mismanagement within your agency mm -hmm. you just don't get anything is exactly. that true but well, and, and that's what we're pushing for I mean it's it's sad to say uh, like I mentioned, the, when it comes to the front office, they, they bless off on, on our, our request, and this is inclusive of operations. Why do you allow them to drive around in these expired vehicles? Uh, it's, it, it's, when it comes to life-threatening si situations, I, 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 do, I am aware of that situation, but when the, the, uh, the public safety is at, at issue, and I leave it up to the discretion of, of, of lieutenant here should we not entertain it because of budget reasons or should we entertain it to protect the public so just so i understand this yeah. because you know i'm i'm, I'm yeah. you right so i right. want to understand your budget as department of agriculture a little bit more okay yeah. do you not uh within your agency do you not provide funding for these gentlemen that fall under your agency do you not help allocate these funds that, that is the intent, and like, a, like I mentioned, every budget request. And, and you've been a deputy for a while, right? I was deputy for a year and a half. Okay. Yeah. And truthfully, too, sometimes I, I put out on my own to, to help, help, help the uh, situation. So, I, again, that's why we're here, operational yeah. budget issues. Uh, like, like he mentioned, you know, it's repetitive, and okay. we, we hope to resolve this. But again, your question of do I allow? I mean, it's, am, am I going to tell the public because we have expired license, we cannot entertain your the safety? So it's, you know, uh, that's, okay. that's the reason why we're there. I mean, it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry for interrupting, Lieutenant Ogden. It's okay, ma'am. Um, if further on in your binder, you will see requests, memos, requests for assistance. For simple things like rat poison. We have a rodent problem of Manila area and they're chewing the wires that are inside our vehicles that we put in the warehouse so that we can protect them. And a simple request like that goes unanswered because we don't have money. We have records for our arrest cases that we have to hold on to for court purposes and the integrity of those records are, are, are uh, compromised by termites because we have no money to get simple termite treatment, no funding, things like that, that we, we don't even have a proper evidence room for these things and records room for these things. You've seen our situation on your budget. We have the pictures to provide for you. It's, it 
it's long overdue. Please help us. That's all I really I want to say right now. Next, please. Next one. Okay, this this the uh, the write up on the on the uh, the vessels itself. The Boston waiter is forty plus years old. It's out of service needs, and we've been we've been uh, receiving calls from the public asking why are you not patrolling? Why are you not patrolling? Senator Castro is well aware of these problems. He's talked to these people out there, asking where are the conservation officers, what are they doing? Our RHI, we got donated. Thankfully, Lieutenant Regis had had uh, worked with GPD on re on uh, securing that vessel from them. But again, second-hand vessel over 20 years old, but we don't have the funding to keep it going. It's a good vessel, but both of them are. But where are, where's the funding to keep them operational? That's what the public wants to know. Why are you not there? So hopefully we can get the support for that. Okay, we have two jet skis. One was operational, one got damaged. Um, because we can't operate one jet ski by itself, it has to wait for its partner. It's in tandem for safety reasons. Because we couldn't get that other jet ski operational in a timely manner, the other one went down. Now we have two out of service jet skis. These vessels that, you, that we are mentioning to you, we understand and know how they work. We need to keep them moving. Once they're stagnant, they start to break down, especially with saltwater equipment. We try our best to keep everything up to par as much as we can, soliciting help from our mechanic friends or paying with our own money to keep things going. But it just caught up to us. We cannot afford this anymore. So uh, we did get help from uh, MDA. Mr. Weber has purchased the parts we need for two vessels out of his own pocket, out of his own pocket to get these vessels going. now. We're looking for the mechanic to, to help us fix it now. So that's what we do day in and day out. It's, it's, it's embarrassing. Next. Okay. Infrastructure, building evidence room and armory. All, all three of those, you've seen those, the state there. And we have a few pictures of that. Go ahead, next one. Okay, that's our office, not where we're at now. Our deputy director has been in many arguments with, with the feds about where we're at now, because it's not supposed to be us because of the funding source. But we asked them for temporary, temporary to be housed because of our situation. So we're trying to rectify this problem. Hopefully by the end of the fiscal year, we'll know through the efforts of NOAA, hopefully. But this is our office. Next to Price Elementary School. Next to. This is what it looks like inside. This is a 2004 building. The ground wasn't settled when they built this building. The building has actually shifted and cracked on the seams. You can see those cracks. The floor, that's what gave up on the floor. By the movement of the building, popped all the tiles and the woods coming off. So this is where we could not, we were deemed uh, um, uh, inhabitable for us to be there. So they. From, from DPW, yeah. Next, please. This is our evidence. This is our evidence room. With citations, we won't need to, to collect all this stuff. This is how we're storing this stuff. They're, they're in closed, locked areas, but it's, in, it's not a proper storage area for these things. This is an office space. Can That's I, where this stuff is at. If I may, I'd just like to share with my colleagues. This is, um, this is actually, um, a cleaned up picture of what was there when I first went there. Um, I'm ho I was hoping you would keep it original, but it looks like you re you removed a lot of items that were uh, in, in, okay, okay. Next, please. There it is. This is what it looks like. This is all these gear, which is not necessary for us to keep this stuff. If I may, sir? Yes. Some and of these things and you have date a back to the 90s, to 80s. Some of these cases date back that far. So you can see how we've been storing it for years. If we have a citation program, this will be almost non-existent. 
Ma'am, this is, if I may, uh, introduce Chuck Flores. He's our evidence custodian for our section. And just to reiterate, this building is condemned. Yes, ma'am. So we're using it as storage. Okay. That's our termite problem. These are wreckage for the court. Thankfully that some of these cases, majority of these ones here, have already been through the, the judicial process. But these are our records. This is what happens when we don't have proper care and proper facilities. And there's no temperature regulation? No, ma'am. There's no filing cabinet system? We actually there. cut the power on the main switch so that the building doesn't catch fire a while back. So that the building doesn't catch fire? Yes, ma'am. Some more records. See the termite problem between the boxes? More and more gear. If you take a look at this picture very carefully, these are not rotting reels. These are firearms. You want to talk public safety, that's how many guns we take off the street. It's actually a very small number. We, uh, a couple of years ago, we got rid of maybe close to 200. So that room was filled up. We had containers of guns that we took to GPD's armory to dis dispose of. So that's that's a very small number. But some of those guns as well date back to the early, uh, early 80s. Is, is the, um, I'm probably sure you'll have a picture of it, but does this armory meet the standard of public safety to house these weapons? No, ma'am. I'm sure it doesn't. Sure no, ma'am. There's no There's alarm no system. Control. There's no climate control. There's no secondary gate at the doorway. We actually built this on our own money. Well, the COs before our time actually got materials from their house and built. We managed in the 90s to replace the door with an aluminum door. That's about the only upgrade we got. You built, you built this? Yes, ma'am. The officers did back in the day. Uh, the, is, this the, is this armory in the condemned building? Where is this armory No, ma'am. It's in another building, just undisclosed. Are you the only ones that have access to the yes, building? Yes, ma'am. Conservation officers? This building no, is not shared? No, to the, to to the, the armory building. itself, Chuck and two other con uh, evidence custodians, the secondary and then the, the alternate, are the only ones that can access that, 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 that armory. But the, the armory itself is inside a warehouse that is access to other employees. This is just lock and key? Yes, ma'am. Just lock and key? Yes, ma'am. We're in need of help. For a long time we've been asking. Nobody's come through. Next, please. That's part of the armory. That's the ammo and some evidence are in the, that locker as well like small items that we confiscate, like bullet shells and pistols and whatnot. And files, there are some files in there too. Next, please. I think those, those filing cabinets which hold small arms and other evidence of cases came in in the World War I era, which we're still using. Uh, you see the guns in the corner there. That's how much work we do, and again, this is a problem that's been going on for many years. It's not on my director here right now. Yes, he is our leader, but we need more. We need more than than anybody could imagine. More help than anybody can imagine right now. So this is what we have to deal with. We've been asking for help for many years. Next, please. We got that locker donated to us from another officer that had retired from that driving school. That's the locker that we keep service weapons in. Our, the for our officers. Correct. The weapons that you use? Yes, ma'am. In that same armory? Yes, ma'am. So long as we're following the law as far as securing them, we're, we're, that's the focal point on this, that we follow that they're in a secured locked area in cabinets that are locked. But the problem is, is they're dilapidating in this. We have them together with the other weapons that we have. There's no climate control. No, ma'am. For your own service weapons. No, oh, ma'am. Next, please. 
next week. This is a Ford Expedition purchased through NOAA grant. This sole purpose of this vehicle was to help us pull the vessel that we got from Parks and Rec, the 40 year old, because we had no vehicle at the time strong enough to pull that, to pull that uh, Boston Whaler. So they actually purchased this vehicle for us. Right now this vehicle is, is, is going down. None of the vehicles work, which is a safety hazard. The, the emergency system is already breaking down on this vehicle. And it's not because of abuse. This vehicle is how many years old now? 2009. It looks brand new because we try our best to upkeep it. But inside, the engine, the mechanicals are all shutting down. No funding. Even the wiper on the passenger side don't work no more. Yes, ma'am. And it's expired. Next, please. This is our sole surviving vehicle that we got from the CRI grant. This vehicle here has many issues, but it it stunts. It can be driven, but it's in bad need of some electrical and mechanical work. And the brakes are going. I can't fix it. This is the last one. Next, please. I'm sorry. We, that vehicle, thank you, that vehicle, the brakes are dying out on you and you're still driving it? Because we, you don't have the money to make it? We did like this vehicle. We did like this vehicle. It's, it's in the compound. We keep it moving in the compound, but we're not going to use exactly. it for patrol no more. And just to clarify that any of these vehicles that are considered deadline will not be sent out there for, for operations. We can't. And then that's, a, that's another hazard now for the guys for response. N next, please. Donated to us from ATF. Great problem. No emergency lights. No siren. And it sits there because we don't have the funding to service it. But because I was at a law enforcement committee meeting with uh, Lieutenant Governor, that ATF heard our plea and said, okay, well, we got the vehicle, we can donate to you. So that's where that vehicle came from. That's why I was trying to explain that we're trying ourselves to go out and reach out for help. This is part of what we get back. Next, please. One of the four trucks that we got, officer was on patrol coming up of, out of Tangisan, caught fire while he was on patrol. The cause of the fire, according to the fire investigator, leaky, leaking power steering fluid got onto electrical system and ignited no service. That was one of my recruits operating this vehicle. Next please. Again, mechanical problems. Can't fix it, shuts down. Now they use it for, for a trash bin. Next please. Mechanical issues again, was ravaged by thieves. That's what happened in our compound. Thieves came in the night, knew it wasn't working, and they stripped it all in one night. Next, please. These are the utility vehicles kept in the warehouse, all unserviceable. No money, no service. And now the rats are getting into these vehicles, like this, chewing the wires. And these are purchased through Homeland Security. Next, please. That's the one jet ski that now we have to service because we can't use it without the other, without the the other one. Next, please. That's our vessel, the forty-year-old Boston Whaler. Still serviceable. We took good care of it for the years we've had it but it needs service and we don't have funding for it. We cannot serve the public. Next, please. That's the vessel from GPD. Simple, simple funding source to fix the problem and it'll be up and running, but... How much does it cost to fix this boat? Okay. 
for this one? Yeah, I believe it's about five to six hundred dollars. It just needs uh, servicing, changing of the oils, um, any tune-ups for the engines. That's basically what it costs so for. So less than a thousand dollars, and this boat will be fixed. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And the other boat probably costs about I think it was eleven hundred dollars to get us some new oil pumps and uh, to service the vessel itself. Mr. Weber has donated that funding to fix both these vessels. That's what we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. So we can service the But public. going forward, we can't just keep asking him to fund it for its servicing. We need the funding to come from, from either the department or the government somewhere. Next one, please. That's about, that's the last one. Thank you for that uh, presentation. And again, I want to in light of seeing everything that the adversity that you have to face, the struggles that you have to endure just to keep our island safe, um, thank you very much for your dedication because sincerely this is, um, this is not conducive to your safety. Um, you're essentially not just your job risking your lives, but because of the fault of our government not being able to provide funding for you to operate, we're putting you at risk as well. Um, at this time, I'd like to open up the, question, open up the floor for my colleague if they have any questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate the opportunity to participate uh, in this budget hearing process. Uh, the Department of Agriculture, is, as uh, the officer kind of referred to earlier, is you know one of those prize agencies that I tend to look at given my interest in the preservation of our natural resources. Uh, I want to start on a positive note. I want to commend you, um, Mr. Uggen, and the rest of your team, as well as the leadership, for having taken a noticed role in the Pacific Rim. I remember that you had gone off to provide specialized training at the request of uh, our brothers and sisters in the other jurisdictions. Um, that's definitely noteworthy. I also want to draw attention to the fact that I, I'm sure our colleagues here all appreciate that you're taking an entrepreneurial approach to generate revenue. You mentioned a citation program, uh, and I, I'd like to follow up offline with yourself, director and the leadership. Mr. Ogden and his team, especially the chair here, on what it is that we need to do as policymakers to amend the statute that would empower you to issue the proper citations. I have a litany, I have a whole, I have several pages of questions and notes that I'd like to follow up on, but I think that one can address many of them, specifically with the, with the concern I have for life and safety, not just of yourself, but of folks who gain access to those firearms Okay, and or explosives, and I'll go down my list eventually. I also want to draw attention as well to the GCC Marine Terrestrial Regional Enforcement Program. What a feather in your cap. I really hope to see that manifest itself in the not too distant future, at least in this term, under this administration, with your director and your leadership. A lot of words were thrown out there. They can be interpreted in many ways. You mentioned substandard, almost abandonment, that's my word mistreatment, exhaustion, those are your words to an extent. I'd like to follow up offline to see what we can do to address each of those, in my opinion, very subjective terms so I can assign very empirical points on why you feel that way aside from what you already discussed. It's a very strong statement. Your personnel staffing pattern went down from 19 to 8, at least for conservation. My follow-up question is, do you currently have uh, administrative support? No, sir, not directly with us. We do, we do take our administrative uh, uh, support to uh, fisheries if we need to for clerical work or to the director's office um, for, for any other assistance from them. But directly in our office, no, sir. Okay. I, I sympathize with the earlier reference of a 27-year veteran in conservation officer service with a graduate degree. I sympathize. From a policy maker's perspective and a former director, does, did the individual qualify for the position to advance? Now, just because you have a heart, uh, master's degree and just because you serve almost three decades doesn't automatically qualify you. I, I, Mr. Argan, I don't want to make reference to the individual's name. So I just need to establish as a matter of public record 
Yes, sir. More than more than more than qualified for the positions that that had they been available. Thank you. Yes, sir. You also made reference to acting positions. I'm actually quite surprised you haven't been promoted. I know that you qualify, and the administration has been looking favorably upon your nomination. Um, so that shouldn't be in the too distant future. But my interest is more keenly in the area of acting capacity. How long have you been serving in an acting capacity? Since Lieutenant uh, Ray just retired in 2015. I'm sorry. First of all, I, I, I probably want to encourage the, the administration's representatives to revisit that statement because I think it's a direct violation of the statute. You can't yes, serve longer is. than a certain period of time. We, we addressed that. Um, well, I addressed it to the deputy and, and the director and the ASO uh, a while back, and we haven't come to a conclusion on that, but I still got to do the work. I cannot leave them in. I understand. Just, yeah. just so you know, and I'm yes, no sir. expert, that there are implications for a classified member of the government to serve beyond a six-month term and an yes, acting capacity. I don't even think it's legally possible. No, sir. But I, I don't want to turn this into a, a discussion on personnel rules and regulations. Yes, I just sir. wanted to make it crystal you're clear correct, that your assertions are not what I thought I heard, that they're in fact, you know, reaffirmed. Yes, sir. I'm curious, so I'm a big fan of the Homeland Security and Marianas Regional Center, right? And, and, I, and, I, and I cannot underscore the importance of the Conservation Officer Corps in being part of that family. What is agriculture's role, specifically the Conservation Officer team's role at Homeland Security with respect to the Fusion Center? The Fusion Center, from what I understand, is a, is, is a network put together to collect information, uh, intelligent information, and to share among the, the law enforcement communities here on Guam for better preparedness. Our role there is to be, just as another committee member, to act in that capacity and nothing more. We disseminate or receive information to other agencies and share and react upon that as, as, as we deem, as, as the Homeland deems necessary, sir. I'd like to work with you on a positive note to further define what that is. I think you do play a pivotal role. You mentioned something about the use of technology and some kind of cybersecurity yes, component sir. to this. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Uh, that's the future. I think future monitoring operations could yes, incorporate sir. some of that. And your director is well aware of some of our efforts that we put together, put forward, and have actually um, uh, received some funding. Uh, but you won't see that manifest itself probably till about late December. Yes, sir. Uh, storage of evidence, Mr. Ogden. Yes, sir. Dating to the 90s. Yes, sir. Are there explosives such as bullets, and I don't know the technical term, but what about California seals in your inventory? We we have we have small arm. It's called small arm ammunition stored in our in our armory, and maybe one or two California seals, if I can remember back since the 80s, still been there. So you have explosive small arm munitions yes. in your homemade backyard yes, storage facility. Yes, it's hazardous material, yes, sir. Okay. Flammable hazardous. Thank you for drawing attention to the reserve program. Yes, sir. I did speak with your director about what we can do to uh, bring some additional life into that program, if there ever was. I think it's a necessary component to not just uh, strict enforcement of the MPAs, but in gathering important information, even with respect to the fisheries data. Um, this seems to be a conservation enforcement centric discussion, but I think there's also another role that conservation officers play beyond just the law enforcement component, right? And so yes, we sir. can always talk about that at another time. Um, you mentioned 10 officers at 30,000. Can you, can, you, can you explain how you came up with that? Is that a 250 times? It's a, it's a 250 stipend for uniform and equipment maintenance yeah. for, for 10 officers for, for a calendar year. Okay, and I know that my colleague, Senator Joseph Augustine, has been very bullish about amending stipend compensation for, I believe, yes. the police reserve and or some other reserve program. Yes, sir. Do you believe that the Conservation of Reserve Officer Program also warrants that amendment in this state? Definitely, sir, but at the time of the creation of the reserve program, we were following the Guam Police Department's standard I of stipend. Yeah. Yes, sir. I understand. So I want to encourage you to work with your director to make sure Senator St. Augustine 
Yes, sir. Uh, if well informed of that, I know he's working on an initiative to do exactly yes, that. Sir. I also would like to, I, I want to put some positive notes on the table that the administration is doing. I'm not here to defend the administration, but I am here to add a little, a little bit of balanced perspective. I know that the AmeriCorps program, thanks to the Serve Guam Commission under Doris Uggen, is looking at implementing a natural resource component of the AmeriCorps team that's designed to supplement uh, what you folks do at Agriculture Director. But I could see that there's a tremendous need also in the conservation side, at least to observe and report, almost like a neighborhood watch for the marine resources. Yes, sir, we're aware of the program. Uh, Sergeant Regardio has been working on that uh, for about a month now. He uh, spoke to an individual that's working with that program, interested. We're trying to bring it up to speed, but because of the hearing right now, we haven't been able to I understand. I'll get in touch with them. Offline, I'll go ahead and refer you to some other people that yes. you can uh, work with. I know that the director was integral also in co-authoring components of the Salston Stall Kennedy Grant, which really is uh, designed to improve your fishery data, fishery data collection methodologies. Uh, you should be seeing in phase two of that grant. Um, is it Lieutenant Ugin? What is your official title? I've been acting since 2015. Okay, I'll give you. Everybody gives me that respect in the office. I'll give you the proper co protocol. Yes, sir. So, Lieutenant Ugin, I want to encourage you as well to prioritize the need to deploy those technologies that are associated with that particular grant uh, that may assist you in remote observation using drone technology and, uh, and or iPads. And this funding source is 100% uh, federal. And I'll close, Madam Chair, uh, also with drawing some attention to the Marine Conservation Act of 2017. Uh, the act is designed to assist the department by decentralizing monitoring and or management and or development of policies, rules, or prospective laws as it relates to that affected municipality. I'll give you an example. So the municipality, Homotec is an example, Homotec Bay and its MPC to, and its mayor and its stakeholder group can determine for itself what its priorities in recreation, commercial, there's a third one, recreation, commerce, and something. And the point is, Come again? It's sustainability. Subsistence. <laughs> That's right. Subsistence, commerce, and um, and recreation. But but I guess my point would be, Lieutenant, that um, if you engage yourselves with the proper training, now you just multiplied your efforts to properly enforce that area. And that's important because you establish stakeholder buy-in. And so what that does is it's designed to help alleviate some of the pressure. So. I strongly encourage you to weigh in at the public hearing on the Marine Conservation Act of 2017. Other than that, Director, uh, I applaud you and your team's efforts for making do with what little or nothing they have, but what was said today as a matter of public record has serious implications, specifically with respect to your acting appointment that went beyond years and the lack of merit promotion due consideration, I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume you were considered uh, for a member of your, your team having served 27 years with a master's degree and not having been promoted. And so uh, I stand right alongside the chair, who is a very strong voice for equality, and she's an advocate not just for agriculture and conservation, but for the Uniform Law Enforcement Corps. And, um, any additional information you can provide that would help us understand more fully and be well informed and not driven by emotion to work with this administration to improve the status quo would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I know this is an informational briefing and because I'm new, I wanna go ahead and just gather some more information. So Director, how, how long have you been sitting in that capacity there at Agriculture? Well, when I, when I first started, it was uh, 2000, late 2013 appointed as a deputy director. Okay. Uh, and then in 2015 appointed for d uh, director position. Like um, Lieutenant Uggen says that, you know, you inherited a lot of the issues that the agriculture has been having. I just, I can't even comprehend how, you know, how long it's been that you've been suffering these type of issues and, and you keep getting, it, the hole just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. I, I can't comprehend how it's taking this long to be heard. And I'm sure you've sat here every year, every informational briefing and budget hearing, and 
the same cries over and over again, uh, even to a point where the you know, frustration is already coming out in, in your presentation. I, I can't understand how it's, it's gone on this long. And I mean, could it be that because of all the changing of leadership, maybe, that, um, I don't know, Lieutenant, it, could it possibly be that every time there's a new leadership or someone sitting in that position, it, it just, it's like starting all over again? Yes, ma'am. It's reoccurring every time. And that's why we want to stop it. We have a mission. We call it the 34 cycle mission is to end all of this and get it done before we retire. We're doing our best to do that now. Well, I appreciate I, that. No, no fault to the director, but I, I understand that, you know, whenever you step into a new position and you, then you have to try to fix all the problems that never been fixed before. So I'm not faulting any director at, at all. I'm just wondering why on this side of the body here hasn't addressed all of those needs and why, you know, you're driving around expired vehicles when we don't even allow that on our own personal streets. So that's very frustrating and I can see that. So I mean, I'm willing to work with uh, the chair, uh, Madam Chair, and, and try to figure out how to get you guys at least up to uh, an operating level and maybe, because I don't think you're asking to exceed any other agency. You're just asking to survive, yes. you know, and That's I can see that. Word, yeah. and, and, um, and, and I really applaud you, uh, Lieutenant Uggen, for, you know, standing by your team and hanging in there this long because really, what you could do is just threaten everybody and say, that's it, we're done. We're not going to do this anymore. We're tired already. 27 years is a long time to be that's, frustrated like this. And that's, that's what I really wanted to hit home today because I've mentioned this before in other briefs. And I hope I'm not going through the motions again and again and again as before. And I don't think so at this time. But it is a, it is a shame. And I, I cannot see that to myself to let it continue. It has to stop. And we're working on that right now. Hopefully within the month we'll know that some change has come. Um, and that's fine. But we need to move forward from there. We need to build our section. We've established our identity. We have established ourselves as a pure, uh, honorable uh, uh, enforcement entity throughout the region, not just here. And with respect to the people of Guam, they need the service that we can provide. Um, just to give you a little bit of what happened a couple weeks back, we had taken some guys in. I'm sure you saw the story on the internet. They advertised the deer. We had one individual that was really irate, and I explained to him that this is what we do. You pay us to do this. This is what we do, and we're going to give you 100%. Although you're on the, the sorrowful end, but this is 100% of what we do. So we truly believe that. So we're asking you guys to support that. We're asking the body to support that. Can, can you just, um, real quickly, Lieutenant Ogden, can you just walk me through the process of when you, when an emergency call comes in, uh, it goes directly to our, the 911 system, is that how it happens? And then, or no, do they call you directly? or? How they they either call my cell phone or call the, we have a hotline donated to us from uh, C Grant. They work out of the University of Guam. Um, they donated their, their resources to provide us with a hotline cell phone. So either it comes through there, my phone, or the, or the office during the daytime hours. And then we respond for whatever the, the call may be for, if it's for fish or what we, we we have officers go out and start the investigation at that point. So, so if they, um, say for example, I, I'm out and in, in the jungle or, and I see something suspicious and I don't know that hotline, do I call 911 and then call they them. refer them to, yes, to you? Yes, ma'am. You can call Because that's your jurisdiction. Yes, oh, okay, okay. You so, can call 911 as well. Okay, and then they can they can say, this is uh, this is a jurisdiction of agriculture yes, officers. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to know what the process was if they call 911. I've been a SWAT operator for more than 19 years as a Guam Police Reservist. And some of my, my fellow workers over at GPD that are SWAT certified will not do what I do as for a living because they think I'm crazy to do that. So, just so you know. 
Thank you. I just wanted to I just want to thank you again and, and yes, acknowledge sir. all the hard work and your commitment to the agency. I, I just I'm just sitting here listening to it. I had an opportunity to talk to Director Sablon every once in a while at Public Safety and and I only heard a little bit of his frustrations up there, but now just sitting here in front of you, uh, I feel angry, mm -hmm. you know, that you had to go through that. Thank you. Yeah, just a follow-up question just dawned on me. First of all, um, you guys are always very professional when I see you folks down at, let's say, Labor Day providing additional security. Um, with respect to the prior discussion about promotion, I'm remiss. I have a follow-up question. Did the individual director or lieutenant again receive the increments due to him or her over the course of 27 years? Yes, sir. That's important. Yes, sir. Is it possible that the position for promotion was not open, either unannounced and or occupied by another officer? It was unannounced. Understood. Okay, thank you. It, it was deemed vacant. Funding was pulled. Yeah. And I... Yes, sir. Okay. And, and you know, all, all these discussions about, you know, when they mentioned about... When I first came to the department, 27 years, all back then 25 years, and I looked at them and said, what are you guys doing here? Uh, you know, it's, and it's all about loyalty, sacrifices. So that's when I said, this has to stop. So like, like I mentioned, this fiscal year, the promotions will occur, and they, we will recruit three more additional warm bodies. Uh, we, we need to move forward uh, um, with the other issues about building maintenance and repair, the, uh, lack of equipment, la lack of operable uh, vehicles. Those are the challenges then I, that I would accept as a director. So there's a lot to move forward with. And I appreciate, again, the opportunity, you guys, all of you hearing all our concerns. So it is what it is. What we present is uh, our issues and challenges. Thank you, uh, oh. Director, for that. Uh, Ma'am? Yes, sir. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'd just like to expound on that real quick. Okay. Um, Officer Guy Richard Amogadio, uh, the 27 year, 25 year candidate. The government has had numerous opportunities to promote us. It started with a 2008 audit. In that audit, they reclassed uh, a few of us, five of us, to get to the Conservation Officer 2 at that time. Three, two have passed away, and two uh, to, uh, to transition and Christian have gone. That just left me with uh, Frankie Kanata, who is now deployed, right, mobilized at Anderson. Fast forward, okay, to 2011, 2013, Chuck, we looked at it. Sergeant Roger L. Watson retired, dedicated. He's the one who built the uh, evidence storage room. Sergeant Jimmy B. Camacho retired. I went and talked to the previous director and this director, okay, and the SO. The CO2 positions are now open. Can you honor the reclass? Okay, way back. Sergeant, acting Sergeant Kanata and I got a, a letter saying, about 10 page, 10 words long, saying, we're going to try our best due to funding. Okay? After the 2008 audit passed, legislation passed, and I don't have that because I didn't want to put it in here, but now we're going to look at the record, right, for matter of record, that created and gave funding for the lieutenant and sergeant and CO3 slot that they now put on the table. So 2008, 2009, that's quite a while back. I've heard administrators tell me, right, 
can we when we voice our situation that I'm just here for the retirement. I'm here to close out my years. That's that's the truth. And yet I sat dedicated. I got my master's to the federal Doc Sanchez program and my bachelor's because the government afforded me an opportunity that when your time comes, you will have the capability and the training to be a sergeant, lieutenant, or captain. So I did my part. I did my part, as they say, to be loyal. I did, just like I'm an Army captain in the Army Reserves. I did, I did that. Right now, my reserve unit is helping me out because I asked not to go to annual training because my unit is suffering. Because now that we have another one of us mobilized, I just came off mobilization nine months ago. Okay? So we asked for the promotion, yes. And I commend the administration and the director. I'm not going to open all that kind of worms right now, but I'm going to speak my piece now. Again, this is about the fifth time. He says, I don't know why they didn't, uh, their, their loyalty, because we didn't go forward. We didn't go to GPD or any other uh, customs, whatever the case may be. All right? One is loyalty. I love what I do. Like you said, sir, right? I went fishing when two mom was only at Hilton was only there. So I love what I do. I promoted myself. I got my bachelor's. I got my master's. I went step up. I maintain my outstanding to get my increment. And I trusted management and I trusted our political leaders to do the right thing. And I waited 27 years. Now, we ask for a lieutenant and two sergeants because let's be, let's be frank, there's three seniors here and we're, we're, we're pushing we're pushing to get to that dream sheet task force because it's coming. When we do move up, there's going to be personnel to be filled and the conservation reserve program. You cannot have one sergeant. He's deployed right now. You got to have two. That's down the road. That's what I'm asking for the next FY. The last thing I want to say is, and I'm not going to berate the administration. I'm just going to say what happened is in fact. Before Lieutenant Rages retired, a proposal came down from the administration. Hey, you guys, we'll transfer you all to GPD, give you a special section, and give you 1.2 million. And there's your personnel, there's your promotions. All in, though, everybody must raise their hand that they're willing to go to GPD. I raised my hand. I said no. I'm not understanding, I'm very stumped that if they're offering us 1.2 million, the money, the funding for promotions, operations, I'm not understanding why they can't just give it to the conservation officers and law enforcement section. And to reiterate, when you do go back to the drawing board and say, hey, what have we, what you put, you, it's already stated, what we put to the table. But I just want to reiterate something. As conservation officers, police officers of the territory of Guam, you get more bang from us. Because not only do we go out there at the natural resource, we've worked with GPD. We've worked with SWAT. We've been tasked with SWAT, right, on the drug raids. We've been tasked with the marshals for the fugitive roundup. Okay? We've been tasked with DEPCOR when the rapists and all that we years back escaped. We were tasked to do all that. We go up to the beaches, right? Underage drinking, disorderly conduct, everything. So you get, what I'm trying to say, we're not just conservation officers. We do a lot. In the 90s, we call it ice age in our time when the drug epidemic was heavy. If you look back at our records, Stolen firearms, obliterated raided firearms. We've had to duke it out, out there in the jungles. We have to duke it out very much so. And because we were dedicated and trusted our political leaders, if you look at what I've gone through with my grievance 
and payment compensation for the last two and a half years? I'm going to be candid. Okay? Because I really believe in what we are doing. I chose the law enforcement profession under conservation. The 34 cycle, there's one more left. Sergeant Kanata is up there right now serving. And we promised us, the two of us, the three of us, that these guys here, they're going to redevelop. We're going to re we're going to try our best as we step out the door. Everybody here is out for their own, their careers, their families. And what I don't understand is, you really, Lieutenant Regis, CO3, retired CO3, Con Conservation Officer 2, Sergeant Watson, Sergeant Komachi, retired CO2. The shameful part is, all dedicated, and the political leaders and administrators had every chance to afford them that opportunity to get higher in their retirement pay. And yet it didn't. But yet, we all know what's going on in the newspapers. We all know what's happening with our political leaders about pay raises and all that. What about us? When they talk grassroots, we're boots on ground, we go out there and we mesh and we tangle with the worst of them out there. Director, I just want to ask, uh, we don't have to address it in part or in whole at all today, but for the benefit of the chair of the committee and myself, it, does this whole agricultural produce enforcement component that was redesignated to customs, are you, is that at all associated with the conservation part, or do you remember that? No, no, that's actually the, uh, the PPQ, the one that was, that was, that was under biosecurity okay. back. I'm sorry, what is PPQ? Uh, it was plant test and quarantine. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, and there was a back then years ago, but it was a, a number of employees that were. It, it, it's not the conservation office. Okay, and is that a law enforcement issue or not? PBQ. Uh, uh, regulatory, sir. Re regulatory. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, um, all of you, for coming here today. I'd like to most especially thank my colleagues and their. Um, dedication and support to this cause. And we'd like to sit down with you, uh, director and, and your team, to really uh, go through the intricacies of what you need um, in monetarily in funding to help you fix a lot of these issues that cause a threat to your life and to the life of others. And um, I'm glad to say that I have Senator Castro and Senator Mooney here that have given their full support to this. and. They will also be invited to the meeting that we will have, and hopefully we get this in before the budget hearings for your area. Okay, thank you very much, and God bless. Thank you for your support and all your hard work. Thank you for the opportunity. The committee on, let me just close, the committee on housing, on housing, utilities, public safety, and homeland security is now adjourned. The time is 1240. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you.